And of course, when you hear that sound, you know it's time for your premium and unbeatable family breakfast experience. And hey, when it's Thursday, you know another week is just around the corner. I mean a weekend this time because hey, we're done with the week. Of course, when you get out of bed early in the morning to these awesome personalities, everybody here at Wake Up Nigeria, you know it's definitely going to be a great day. And yes, that's right. We put you first in everything that we do and that's why we have fabulous show prepared for you. Of course, you know who I am. My name is Mizuno Appeal, and for the next three hours on the show, it's tailored to get you off on a good start for a Thursday. So get your favorite cup of beverage or coffee or whatever it is. It's time to snuggle up on the couch while you get ready for work, perhaps. And let's crank up your morning. My name, of course, is Mizuno Appeal. And hey, guess who we have in the kitchen this morning? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> what so do you do with a chopstick? You said mic? something about it's. Uh, you know when you take um, rice or something, and uh -huh. you have. So this is chopstick beverage. Chopstick what? Chopstick beverage. You know what you so just done. It's coffee in here this morning. It's a very frigorific uh, Thursday morning, and uh, you definitely need something hot, hot by hot, like not hot, hot. Hot. We you understand it. what I mean? But hey, come on, it's great to be here this Thursday morning. How are you doing, know? I'm very good. You've also given me a very interesting idea for the games tomorrow mm. with that chopstick. Hot. Oh, no, chopstick. The chopstick. And definitely this time you're playing it, so don't <laughs> run away from this one. Okay, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> it's all good. Stream the show live at tvcentertainment.tv and on Facebook at TV Connect. Remember to use the hashtag when you send in those messages and comments across all our social media platforms. Of course, you know what it is. It's Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. Our apps remain available for you for download. Um, so it's at no cost on Android and also on iOS store. Watch us on your mobile devices from anywhere you might be in your house, your home or in the world. And we also remind you once again to subscribe to our YouTube channel, tvcentertainment.tv. Also joining us on ID Live on Friday at 2.30 p.m. will be someone special as we do this every single end of the week for us to chat and you can interact with, with them as we like you to. So, as usual, we will be starting with the soothing words of inspiration from none other than Judy. Welcome, everybody. Ah, Mary. <laughs> very, very funny. What did you, what did you she see? She scared me. She scared you. I didn't see you sitting there. Really not. Welcome, how are you? Very well, thank you. Mm. Good morning. Mm. How are you doing? Oh, man, it's a cold morning, man. It's it is. After last, um, yesterday's rain. So in Nigeria, it's not rained for almost a month. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And of some parts of Lagos, it's not rained as much as it was predicted to uh -huh. rain or forecasted to rain. Yeah. Not as much, generally around the state. So, but yesterday, it, I, yeah, I, yeah, maybe I was think trying to make up for Exactly, yeah. it made up. But <laughs> I'll tell you something, this year, the weather pattern is perfect. Mm. We followed every single weather pattern, every single, um, what do you call it? The seasons? Uh, the seasons, exactly. Okay. They have come and it's the first time it's done that in a very long time. Mm. Um, if you notice other years, maybe after the August break, there will be no rain. Okay. So I'm expecting we're going to have a very big very hammer tan season. It's yeah, because it seems possible. like it's going to... And then, about the, then what time? Because normally, growing up, Hamatan starts coming in November. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But this time, I was saying that Hamatan will come even after but, Christmas. And you know the Hamatan of when we were growing up? Those, like, really cold oh, and mostly. hazy yeah. mornings when you use Santana pomade and all of that. You remember it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Did you oh, just wow, say Santana pomade? Changed. I can't yes. even remember it. It just it's, changed. It, what was it like? It's yellow. It is so oily, eh? It will last for five days on you. <laughs> no matter how much you take you a bath, take it's, bath. it's on there. It'll, it'll, it was, it'll stay. So it yeah, I, really I, patterns oily. are shifting. And of course, global warming is to blame for that mm -hmm. also. Over the past years, uh, well, a certain president doesn't believe in global, global warming. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why he doesn't believe in global warming. But yes, it is something. Places, um, ice uh, glaciers are melting uh -huh. in some regions of the world. It's getting colder in some places, not because... Um, like I said, ice is melting, so it's yeah. moving around. So some other places are getting colder than they should normally be. Mm -hmm. But generally, we yeah. need to take care of the earth. Yeah, yeah. same person you're referring to got uh, nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. No, but I saw it, Dollar. I, so I saw the headline. I was, I was too shocked to read it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm telling you, like, I saw the headline and I swiped past it. Like, what did I see? No, uh -uh, no, no, no there's no point. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm telling you. But you got to so admit, he... I was he, wondering... Um, he has made certain efforts that are notably... I don't, regardless of your political um, perception of him, okay. Trump has actually been quite uh, 
instrumental in some areas, some key areas, especially? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, if it's business areas, um, I would say yes. Mm -hmm. But in most other areas, I don't know what to make of that because he's a businessman. Yeah. And I dare say that he's done quite a lot to protect his interests for when he leaves office. Oh, is yeah. that what it is? Oh, okay, so yeah. he doesn't, as far as I know, he doesn't take salary. Huh? Yeah. And um, he's, but well, his net worth now, he's mostly into hospitality. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. With the Trump Towers and all of that. Now his net worth took a $400 million Deep. hit. Yeah. So he's like about 2.3 now. Mm. But generally, billionaires made more money during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Than, you know, so, but he's in hospitality. Hospitality dropped because people, of course, hotels yeah. were closed, yes. um, vacation spots, yeah. he, the Mar-a-Lago resort. That's why he makes a lot of his Trump, uh, his Powers whole endeavors are around that. hospitality, mm. you know, for the world. So it dropped. But one other thing I would say, maybe the North Korea, I've not read the article, but I know that maybe the summit with mm. uh, North Korea, the one with Kim Jong un, yeah. mm -hmm. he's the first person that's done it in a very long time. Yeah. So I know that that might have contributed to him. Being nominated but for that this one was specifically his efforts uh, between uh, Israel and um, Saudi Arabia, Arabia okay. I think. Uh, okay. Okay. Mistaken. Okay. So oh. that's, that's what's. Um, if Trump can do it, man, anybody can. <laughs> you know, that's what I say. Hey, I Kim mean, Kardashian be, next. Be, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I would. I really wouldn't be surprised if Kim becomes president someday. <laughs> yeah, choke on it. <laughs> I really wouldn't be surprised because. I've realized something. Many people vote based on sentiments than mm -hmm. practicality. Mm -hmm. And True. so, yeah, that, that, that's actually a problem in most True. cases. <sighs> True. Yeah. Oh, well. Mm. Anyhow, it's good to see you guys. Um, I can't wait to find out what's been happening in the world of news. Mary, you got that covered? I do. No, you don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Time for the news updates on Wake Up Nigeria. Um, activities at the Aminu Kanu Teaching Hospital have been affected by the ongoing strike embarked upon by the National Association of Resident Doctors. Patients are awaiting medical attention at the facility and they are calling on government to consider meeting with the demands of the doctors to enable them full access to medical care. TVC News Kanu correspondent Ibrahim Issa reports. Hundreds of patients at various locations at the Aminu Kano Teaching Hospital await medical attention. On a normal day, these patients would have been treated in larger numbers. But today, the queues are even longer as patients wait to be attended to by the few available medics. The resident doctor strike has grounded activities, leaving consultants and nurses to pick up the task of attending to patients. The patient expressed worry and one government to wade in so that the industrial action will come to end. My message to the government is that please, the government should look into the plea of the doctors. They are really at the forefront. They are really exposed. The doctors should please take care of their needs so that they'll be able to attend to our patients and we will be able to receive the due service. It has affected me because actually I'm supposed to be at the office too by now. I'm just here to see a doctor and fix my um, clinic day, but I've spent over two hours here waiting. It's, I hope they do something about it soon. Authorities at the Aminu Kanu Teaching Hospital say emergency services like the intensive care units have been exempted from the strike as patients in there are given attention. The president of the Association of Resident Doctors at the Aminu Kanu Teaching Hospital says the strike will end when the federal government meets their demands. We have signed so many documents. We have signed so many memorandum of settlement, memorandum of understanding, but without uh, uh, successful fulfillment of all those terms and conditions. So we are not going to call off uh, the strike action as until we, we see something on ground. Medical activities in tertiary hospitals across Nigeria may remain skeletal until the federal government and striking doctors reach an agreement. It's the third day since the National Association of Resident Doctors embarked on an indefinite strike. Activities at Aminu Kano Teaching Hospital has been affected because resident doctors make up a large percentage of doctors in Nigeria's tertiary hospitals. But residents of Kano, especially those admitted here, pray that the strike ends soon. Ibrahim Isa, TVC News, Kano.
Now, uh, yesterday, the federal government directed the chief medical directors and managing directors of federal tertiary hospitals to immediately commence the use of consultants and doctors on the National Youth Service Corps to provide routine services. The government also directed that locum staff should be brought in when and where necessary to forestall services disruption when applicable and affordable. Minister of Health Osage Eanire gave the directive in a statement issued in Abuja on Wednesday while reacting to the nationwide strike by resident doctors over the non-payment of their COVID-19 hazard allowance and other demands. According to him, and I quote, emergency services should continue to run as before. Routine services should be maintained with consultants, NYSC doctors, locum staffers to be brought in when and where necessary to forestall services disruption when applicable and affordable. End of quote. Now, away from the resident doctor strike, Nigeria is now taking over from India as the world capital for under five deaths. This is according to the 2020 mortality estimates released by the United Nations Children's Fund. The development comes two years earlier than the World Bank projected. The reports, which cover the period of three decades, 1990 to 2019, uh, did that 49% uh, of all under five deaths in 2019 occurred in just five countries, Nigeria, India, Pakistan, the Democratic Republic of Congo and Ethiopia. India has at least six times the population of Nigeria. The report said on the five mortality rates have declined by almost 60% since 1990. However, the UN expressed concerns that the potential of a mortality crisis in 2020 threatens years of remarkable improvement in child and adolescent survival. To the Malabo scandal now, the federal government has asked the court in Milan to order Royal Dutch Shell and any to pay the sum of $1.092 billion as an immediate advance payment for damages in the Malabo oil scandal, one of the oil industry's biggest ever corruption scandals. Now, according to the lawyer of the Nigerian government, Lucio Lucia, said during the hearing into the corruption allegation linked to the acquisition of the OPL 245 uh, offshore field by any and Shell, the federal government requested an advance payment ahead of a more comprehensive damages package to be decided by the court at a later date. It will be recalled that the case involves the 2011 acquisition of oil block prospecting license by any and Shell following the payment of $1.3 billion to the Nigerian government for the OPL 245 offshore field. With an allegation that about $1.1 billion of the same amount ended up in the account of Malabu Oil and Gas, which was owned by a former petroleum minister, Dan. All right, then. So, oh, by the way, Mike wanted to ask you, did you hear that one CR7, what he said about football during the coronavirus? He said, um, football without fans is like a circus without clowns. Very cheesy. The fans are the heart and the soul of the game. And so we will definitely see a difference. Players, uh, their morale will lift up and all of that. Mm. That's mm. what we expect when fans get back into the stadiums oh. and, of course, uh, venues, sporting venues around the world. True. Well, alrighty then, so let's do the papers, the front page, the headlines, everything coming to you this morning. It's Thursday, September 10th, 2020, and we've got all the regular dailies here, and uh, so let's see what's in the news. We start with The Guardian this morning. New tariffs push prices above global average. Nigeria's among OPEC's most expensive petrol products. Sixth highest electricity tariff in Africa. It'll soon be cheaper to import sachet water than to produce. Nigerians blame poor power supply on regulatory lapses. Others, NUEE, NECA, canvas metering consumers before tariff review. There's plenty of tables on the front page of The Guardian this morning. Uh, one of them cost of electricity in major African countries as it continues with a comparison like we've been seeing for days now. And the other Nigeria's declining crude price versus rising PMS pump price. And of course, stats for the COVID-19 cases in Nigeria there in blue. Total number now at 55,632. And Nigeria abandons vision 2020, 20, dreams agenda 2050.
plans to lift 100 million out of poverty, inaugurates steering committee. Those are the headlines inside the Guardian newspaper. Let's move on now to the Nation newspaper. On the Nation front page this morning, APC, PDP in crossfire over patrol electricity rates hike. Ruling party accuses opposition of hypocrisy. Government risks people's anger. And at the top, FBN, UBA Sterling CEOs quit NESG board over attack on CBN policies, Apex Bank defense programs, and Nigeria's debt rises to 31 trillion naira, striking doctors to be paid 4 billion naira allowance in two weeks, marking day fire say in Cold War. Picture story here, the cyber crime suspects in Ibadan yesterday, a um, member of the gang uh, displaying some of the materials used to dupe people and a calabash of black soap. Don't know what that is. And of course, EFCC arrests two brothers, others for cyber crimes in Ibadan. And that's the picture. And determination to salvage Edo and agri sector. And that's the final headline for the Nation newspaper. Next up, we have the Tribune newspaper for a Thursday here. And the first big headline you see, Nigeria's debt rises to 2.38 trillion naira in three months, hits 31 trillion naira. And FG approves 400 million naira to fence Uni Abuja. And Undo 2020, Ijo Group apologizes, disowns Ajay. Oshu government receives 15 trafficking girls from Lebanon. And Undo gubernatorial, no nose mask, no voting. INEC and 17,000 ad hoc staff for poll. Find that on page 29. And over 47,000 jostle for 2,000 Amoteku jobs in Oyo on page 25. Allow me uh, to Magu, I will prepare, or rather I will appear before Salami panel. If at the very top of the page, striking doctors reach agreement with FG to call off strike today. And Benue, Ghana's road to amnesty killing. I was shocked by his killing, Ortom. That's the front page for the Tribune newspaper. As we go swiftly on now to the vanguard, a potpourri of headlines this morning here. Starting with APC, FG deceived Nigerians and subsidy, TUC and S, uh, CSOS says. And um, say government claimed in 2016 subsidy had been removed. Notes government promised to use differential between 86 um, naira 50 couple and 145 naira per liter to fix refineries, uh, fund welfare services for Nigerians and all. Ask FG to disclose crude oil sale. Um, accruals since 2016 and subsidy claims height of deficit, or rather deceit, says the TUC as PDP Atiku uh, stance on deregulation. Hypocritical, says the APC. Lagos records 34 new infections, has confirmed cases rise to 55,632, talking about the coronavirus instance in the country and the stats. UK minister under scrutiny for attacking Nigeria over P and ID cases. And Buhari inaugurates Agenda 2050, uh, 2050 Steering Committee. Um, these and more are the headlines inside of the Vanguard newspaper. You want to pick up a copy of these dailies if you find any of these stories interesting. Tell you what we'll do. Let's do a break. When we get back, it's more Wake Up Nigeria on the other side. Stay tuned. Well, all right, now it's time for us to do the best that we can to make your journey faster and easier within Lagos. Of course, you know my name is Mazina, and this is Traffic Situation in Lagos for this morning. While you're being welcomed into Lagos, do note there's going to be a little bit of traffic while they're entering, especially uh, from Berger, Oju to Berger, but it clears out real quick. However, we see that there's plenty of traffic coming out of K2 and Ikorodu as well. And there seems to also be some traffic trying to get in this morning, but it's not as bad as what it normally would be. Um, this should take you about 10 minutes to clear, maybe 15, and you'll be well on your way, perhaps maybe to the island. And if you're heading toward the island, we see that the third Milan Bridge is absolutely free. There's no restrictions on there. However, if you're coming from the Lagos Apapa um, Expressway, then you'd meet plenty of traffic just in between the Oshodi area and Oroshoki um, at the foot of the third Milan Bridge. And this one's a long one. So if that's your route, you want to be prepared for it because it seems it's going to take a while. Traffic inside of Victoria Island is absolutely nice and peachy. Not many people inside of the island today. Getting there from Eco Bridge is absolutely free, as we can see. However, from the Lagos Badagri Expressway, we see some restrictions just at the end of the Aurelia area as you're coming from mile two. Mile two itself, well, <laughs> surprise, surprise, it is free. Never seen it like this before for a Thursday. Ah, but then again, that is it. 
it is a Thursday, so I guess that means not many people are out there as we know what the culture is in Lagos regarding Thursdays. A Papa Oroshoki, or rather Papa, yes, Oroshoki Expressway is absolutely free all the way up until Oshodi, like I said from before. Inside of Ikeja, getting into Ikeja from Airport Road, you'd find that um, the Airport Road Bridge has got some moving traffic on it at least and um, that will take you into um, Bank Anthony, uh, Mobology Bank Anthony, which for now, well, the after part of it seems to be very free. Let me see what the guys uh, in the kitchen have. Uh, do you guys have any social updates for the traffic situation? Well, as it is, uh, there isn't much um, here from what I can see here. Um, it seems like most people are still in bed. However, uh, I'll just take this one uh, from an eye ago. I don't know if it's still the same thing because this might have been the cause of traffic in that axis. I'm talking about Leki Ekwe, a fatal accident that happened on the road uh, heading to uh, towards Ibra Madin Sonia. And then it, at this point, it was a case of calling on uh, FRSC and um, Lasma, and it's said to have involved two trailers oh, wow. and a car. In okay. fact, the person reported seeing, you know, corpses, but let's just hope for the very best. They might just have been uh, injured only, wow. hopefully. That's very sad. Well, yeah. please do be careful out there while you're going about your daily business. We'll try and make sure that it is uh, good for you all we can here on Wake Up Nigeria. Well, we've got very interesting discussions on the way coming up. Um, let's find out what we're talking about. Uh, guys, what are we doing? Well, uh, whatever we're doing, me, I just want to say that I'm very excited because the PL is back this oh, weekend. Oh, wonderful, great the one. The PL is back. And I imagine now come and say, ha, 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 Don't ha, mind you, don't mind you. You know, this is football <laughs> lives matter also. So we, we, te we tend not to discuss sports a lot because of these other guys. guys. <laughs> I don't know what's doing. But look, the same way, let me hear any of them talk. Titi and Mazino, what's that? But, but yes, food, it's going to be well, food. Well, food that's well. Well. where they will see you, chairman. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to see that there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's back this weekend yeah. and um, it's a premium sporting event in the world. Yes. And uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, fans might be allowed from uh, October next month, which is the very big news. Yeah. Uh, fans might be allowing some countries in Europe, they allow them gradually. We know, so this morning, we spoke about how sports in Lagos has mm -hmm. begun. Lagos yeah. is the forefront mm -hmm. about non-contact sports. Yeah. Uh, your racket games and all of that, Scrabble, chess and all of that. Mm -hmm. They returned, started yesterday in Lagos. And that is big because, um, you know, when, when it comes to managing the crisis, we are not as far forward as um, many countries many around the world, in Europe and all the rest. Yeah. So I think it's something, even though a lot of us are tired, I don't know, did you, when last you check N uh, uh, NCDC numbers, apart from when you're uh, reading news? Every day when I'm, okay. <laughs> apart from when you're reading news, I know, <laughs> yeah. that's why. Right. So apart from when you're reading news, so a lot of us, you know, something, maybe our climate or something, but Europe is mm. now surprised that the numbers are not rising in Africa. Oh. As okay, much so as they would the numbers are more? not rising in, in Africa, Africa because one, and this is my personal observation, people don't seem to be getting tested anymore. Mm. The number of people going to get tested has drastically reduced because people are like, well, people are getting better. What's the point? If I take ginger and garlic, okay. I'll be all right. And that is a problem because we are not able to get factual figures. And it's so crazy that most people are asymptomatic. So much so that you could be next to someone who has coronavirus and you won't know. And you don't know what underlying illness you might even have. Because some people don't even realize they have certain illnesses until mm -hmm. it's at an advanced stage. So I find that really worrisome. I know someone personally who was asymptomatic throughout his coronavirus pro uh, you know, uh, infection okay. process. And the only reason he even got to find out is because he's a medical doctor. Oh. So he, they, they usually do routine checks on medical doctors, and then he found out that he had contracted it from a patient. Mm -hmm. Now, he turned out positive. He had to stay at home, self-isolation and all. Two weeks later, I got tested, still positive, wow. still agile, still active, still healthy. No symptoms. I'm telling you. And then the third time, another two weeks later, was when he finally tested negative. negative. So, so many people are living with oh yeah, it. True. Now, now, this is not in any way to discredit the efforts you're making at safety, mm -hmm. right? But one thing I can say is that remember when Melinda Gates gave a prognosis that at the rate, which there was a time when Spain, and most especially Italy, mm -hmm. was hit like yes. mad. Yes. There was no movement, not even as it was lo it was total. I've never seen a kind of lockdown. She said that if it gets to Africa like this, we'll be packing out corpses on the streets. And it happened in Brazil, mm -hmm. Bolivia. 
mm. like corpses were being but thrown out. We don't out. see that currently. Exactly. So, in, I get so where you're is, you understand? So this is not in any way. Please stay safe. But I'm saying that there's something. Look, it might be our climb and all of that. If now let's take it, let's take it out. Yes, it's true. We are not. We don't have accurate numbers as much as we'd expect if we're testing as much as other people. Mm. But then fatalities. How many fatalities do we really have? Mm. Almost no. I mean. You would know if people are around you. So keep your safety measures. But something about our climb or something about mm -hmm. the plenty chloroquine and so malaria this exactly. is exactly. so from when we were kids. Yeah. I, did, that day, I was joking, I was joking with Olamide. <laughs> of course, you know Olamide when we discuss sports sometimes. I told him, I said, look, you are somebody that Kobe can't come near you. Because the amount of malaria treatment I got taking his life. He can cover some he can cover <laughs> TVs his lifetime. <laughs> you know? So I there's something here. That 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 it that so it that makes, it less, I'll, I'll think, makes us less susceptible, makes us less susceptible to, to catch this seems like COVID. The un empirical, uh, um, what you what you what you call it, <laughs> <laughs> that the, it will be ground zero for more research. Okay. I don't know if that kind of research is going on in Africa right mm. now mm. to find out exactly why the numbers aren't what they thought it was going mm -hmm. to be. Mm. In the UK currently, the prime minister announced that they were going to have restrictions for gatherings in homes. Yes. For up to only up to six six people. people yes. I can't well, imagine Johnson, just... such a life. Very true. So, it, that means if you're a family of six, nobody's going to come see you guys. Yes, yes. I, I, it's, it's just yes. as well because it's for your own protection. Very true. This thing is, is, is actually more serious than we think. Very People true. are dying from coronavirus. Mm -hmm. It's just that maybe uh, someone might say, oh, he, 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 the person died from diabetes complications yeah, or one thing mean. or the other. Mm -hmm. But people are dying from it all over the world. Mm -hmm. And we can say, okay, Africa, we are probably covered in all. You know what they say about vaccines and stuff? Mm -hmm. I dare say our own vaccinations came with periodical, as he said, mm -hmm. uh, malaria medicines, all the chloroquine. Don't forget the Agbo. And the Agbo. You see that Agbo, <laughs> I didn't want to say it. So I'm glad you said it. But that's the reality. Mm. Because mm. We, we, don't, we don't even give our children those things mm. anymore. Mm. Back then, mm. it's, it's, it's like a routine. Every first day of the month, you take a cup of mm. Agbo, and there are two types, the one for Agboba <laughs> and the one for Agbo Jedi Jedi. Because all the sugar you're eating, you have to take wow. good care of it. Mm. But now, see, and so way, that's Mary, why so many Mary people are not diabetic. Anything. <laughs> I don't know why she has to. There's a time when Mary will say anything. I mean, when I need anything, then empty. Tell Mary, I need, I need oil in Brazil. Ah, maybe you say yes. Yeah. The only thing I have to say, you man, I have a plug. So she could say anything. But yes, yeah, so you know, but uh, you know, I would, I want to, I want to keep, keep safe. Mm -hmm. Keep safe. Take, keep continue safe. the Please, things so you're doing. Yeah. People don't use face mask anymore. Please, Please use, your, use face your face mask. mask. This thing is a very serious thing. Keep safe. Use your face mask. Sanitize often. Wash your hands. It's it's real. It's it real. real. Very real. Please. Well, that's mm. it. <laughs> Anyhow, now the second hour is where we really get into the show and it is about to kick off right here on Wake Up Nigeria. Yes, if you just tuned in, you've missed something interesting in the first lap. Oh. Not something. So many interesting things, in fact. Yeah. Uh, but we would like to welcome you to the second hour of the best the breakfast best. show on television right now. Yes. Now, we have lots um, still coming your way. So, yeah. uh, like, uh, let's see, uh, tips on etiquette. Guess what mm -hmm. kind? Car and transit etiquette. Hmm. Art, of course, yeah, and so much more. Indeed, yeah. indeed. I, I, I'm looking forward to it. Now, really. about car etiquette, it's something that I've always thought should be a thing. Yeah. Because um, there's a certain way you should you know, comport yourself yeah. in other people's property. Yeah. And um, even if it's your property, how you should, um, what's the word, laid out for people. True. Whether it's a welcome, uh, you know, True. we'll talk about it after. Uh, I, I just even wanted to quickly put, um, throw in something. Uh, during the birthday shout out, uh -huh. there was somebody uh -huh. I was trying to remember. Uh -huh. And then I suddenly remember the person after. Okay. But don't worry, I'll tell you who the person right, is. Cool. Now, all we ask as usual is that you stick with us for every single bit of the show. Oh, yes. My name is Mary Bashua Alimi. And I am Zeno Appeal. You can stream live at tvcentertainment.tv and on Facebook at TVC Connect. Now, of course, you know the TVC app remains available for download free of charge, and that's on both Android and iOS Store. Now, the app allows you to watch us from absolutely anywhere in the world, as long as there is internet, that is. Because someone came up to me and said, <laughs> you did not tell me that the internet is How did you download it in the first <laughs> It's okay. And for more exciting episodes of course you guys know we have YouTube our YouTube channel is TVC entertainment TV it's simple please do follow and of course watch all the episodes you might have missed indeed and uh, you should endeavor as well uh, to join us on IG live every Friday at 2 30 p.m. for that something extra with someone special yes indeed chef 
John Agabas is in the studio with us today. Hey, hey, Chef. It's not your first time, is it? Is it? No, no, no. Chef John? Yeah, How Chef you John. Yeah. Well, How it's good doing? to see you, man. Yeah. What are we having today? We're having black pepper. Black pepper, not bell pepper. Black today. pepper. Black pepper, yeah. Okay. Wow, right. okay. So we black pepper. We read in that book. Oh, yeah. And, and it's so easy to identify with so many things. Okay. Mm. Uh, I just wonder, um, I'm going to ask you this in a different way, but let me ask you first. Okay. Did you have any knowledge of what birthing was? Um, maybe just a bit of it, not really, um, no, I didn't. You did not? No. But no. do you have the, Ooh, do you let's, have? Let's talk about this, we'll talk about it for the Ted banter. Okay, eh? fine, But let's fine. just uh, give a special baby shout out. Yes, uh, mm. yeah, so uh, we want to, you know, I, I kept telling you guys that I remember somebody, I yeah. can't forget the special birthday shout out uh, to the people CEO manager of TVC, talking about Jumoke. Aleoke Malaki, and this is from the People CEO team here in TVC, wishing you a very happy birthday. Ah, we're well, going there to pick our cake this morning. <laughs> 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 this, this is this this pick. This is a beaut. <laughs> look at look at I mean look at that look at that chain, look at that chain. It's okay. It's okay. Look at that. Off your mic. They won't off my somebody. mic. My mic will be louder. <laughs> what Continue. Beauty? We have beauty. Anyway, yeah, in TVC. I know for sure Ibrahim is on standby for the news. Oh boy, it's full of beauty. Hey, anyway, Ibrahim is smiling. <laughs> yeah, because it's just so beautiful. We eat three, uh, three times today. It's not um, uh, not just cake. Mike is going for cake, but uh -huh. you know we're gonna eat three times today. Tough. Uh -uh. <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> Alrighty then. So what do we have in the news? All right, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control reported 176 new cases of coronavirus overnight, taking the country's total number of cases to 55,632. This time, the Federal Capital Territory recorded the highest number with 40 new infections. Lagos came in second place with 34 new cases, followed by Plateau with 26. So far, 43,610 people have been discharged, while 1,070 people have died from COVID-19 complications. As Nigerian students and educators prepare to return to classrooms after a long closure due to the coronavirus pandemic, the United Nations is calling for caution. The UN wants the government to prioritize safety and learners' protection. The humanitarian body says safeguarding education from attack is urgently needed to restore confidence in schools as places of protection for children and teachers. This is the UN, uh, this the UN says will indicate government's commitment to protecting investments in the education sector and serve as a validation of Nigeria's endorsement of the Safe Schools Declaration. Earlier, the federal government directed chief medical doctors and managing directors of uh, federal tertiary hospitals to immediately commence the use of consultants and doctors on the National Youth Service Corps to provide routine services. The government also directed that locum staff should be brought in when and where necessary to forestall services disruption when applicable and affordable. Minister of Health Asage Hanire gave the directive in a statement issued in Abuja on Wednesday while reacting to the nationwide strike by resident doctors over the non-payment of COVID-19 hazard allowance and, and, and other demands. According to him, he says, quote, emergency services should continue to run as before. Routine services should be maintained with consultants, NYC doctors, locum staffers to be brought in when and where necessary to forestall services disruption when applicable and affordable, end of quote. Now, away from the resident doctors' strike, Nigeria has overtaken India as the world's capital for under five deaths. This is according to the 2020 mortality estimates released by United Nations Children's Fund. The development comes two years earlier than the World Bank projected. The report, which covered a period of three decades, 1990 to 2019, added that 49% of all under five deaths in 2019 occurred in just five countries. These Nigeria, India, Pakistan, the Democratic Republic of Congo and Ethiopia. India has at least six times the population of Nigeria. The report said under five mortality rates have declined by almost 60% since 1990. However, the UN expressed concerns that the potential of a mortality crisis in 2020 threatens years of remarkable improvement in child and adolescent survival. 
We'll take this break shortly for sports news with Mike. All right, welcome back. Still Wake Up Nigeria here. My name is Mazino Appeal. Let's proceed with the paper headlines um, so we can tell you what to find when you go out looking um, through these pages this morning. So we start with the Daily Trust for a Thursday, September 10th. Big headline here, 264 Nigerians commit suicide in four years. Depression, job loss, family crisis, top reasons. 800,000 die globally through self-murder, WHO says, and COVID-19 fuels suicide cases in 2020. Government parents, clerics, key to ending suicide. And there is a chart on their breakdown of reported suicide cases between 2017 and 2020. And uh, at the bottom of the page, Buhari inaugurates a committee for Agenda 2050 and 611 Nigerian teachers killed, 910 schools destroyed in nine years. And debut straight from the shoulders by Bar um, Bulama Abukarti. That's for Daily Trust. We move on now swiftly to the Daily Sun. Magu, I'm ready to face panel, says Malami. And a big headline for today on the Sun, Daily Sun, PDP, APC, exchange words over governance. Your, your colossal failure, opposition party slams ruling party, APC. Your position on power, fuel price, deregulation, hypocritical. Uh, middle of the page here, we see this headline, Malibu. I paid Abdoke's co-defendant $9.08 million cash, says witness. Nigeria demands $1.1 billion from Shell. ENI and Emo Landslide, ASUP, res rescues trapped members as uh, situation worsens. NEMA donates 80 million naira relief materials to victims of flood landslide in Abia. And to the side of that, Edo Undo Gubernatorial J uh, CJN inaugurates 85 judges for election petition tribunals. So let's move on now to the Daily Independence. Buhari includes opposition in committee to lead new development plan. Optimistic plan will lift 100 million out of poverty by 2030. And FG striking doctors broke a truce. We spent 3.5 billion naira to produce BB Niger 2020, says multi-choice. And why honest people may not be president by Falai. Malibu scam event by Falai. Malibu scam, FG asks for 1.1 billion naira advance from any shell and determination to salvage Edo from oppression, go oppressive government um, agri sector. At the top of the page, the very top, controversy trails killing of Bainway's most wanted criminal by military. I think you'll find that a very interesting read. You want to find it on page 29. And I'll gladly testify against Magu at Salami panel, says Malami. Nigeria's debt rose by 2.3 trillion naira between March and June on page 29. On now, let's see what we have. Oh, well, I think that's it for today, unless I skipped one, but no, I didn't. So I guess that's it for the dailies this morning here. Um, it's going to be very, very interesting. Uh, so grab a copy of these whenever you can. And uh, you could also even maybe send in a suggestion or a message are using our hashtags. Alrighty, welcome back and you're welcome inside the kitchen today. This is all mine, myself and of course, guess who we have? Chef John in the studio. Want to say hi to everybody out there. Hi. Alright, so Chef John, what are we doing today? Today we are doing black pepper shito. Black pepper who? Shito. Shito. Black shito. pepper. Yeah. Okay, first off, that is the black pepper, yeah? Yeah, yeah. But it's not black. No, we are going to transform. So we're going to fry. Yeah. Let me let you guys know that uh, Chef John could not wait to get started. He wanted to already get started. I said, no, calm down, be coming down. We have to first of all do that intro so everybody sees what we're about to do and all the, let me call them raw materials, ingredients actually. Um, as you can see, we have chicken, plantain, rice, and just the, oh, crayfish. This, yeah, crayfish. Mm, and the black pepper. Yeah. So that's the main bit. Is it uh, the this, black pepper? This dry pepper. This dry, dry pepper. pepper, yes. Okay. We and are going to fry it to make it black then. Okay, yeah. so uh, I guess we're going to be mashing yeah. everything together. Yeah. Okay. All right, great. Well, I can't wait. Um, I, I, I bet it's going to be delicious. This would be what? Breakfast, lunch, or dinner? Uh, breakfast. For breakfast. Yes. Okay. And I bet you can try this at home. So while we're doing this, he's going to tell exactly what you could do, how you can do it, and how easy it is. We're going to show you guys the ingredients and all of that. And I bet you at the end of the show, you can get started with yours already. So let's take a break. When we get back, we're going to get on with this. It's still Wake Up Nigeria. My name is Mazino Appeal and this is Chef John. Yeah, I'll be right back. So you're welcome back. And 
if I'm crying, it's it's not because I'm sad. It's because uh, Chef John already got started with some onions and garlic. Ginger. Ginger, not garlic. Ginger. Ginger, uh, there's garlic too. Okay, so there's onions, so garlic, garlic, and, and ginger. ginger. Yeah. And this is going to make what? What are we making with this? This is the, this is the black pepper. We, are, we just started with, we have to start with garlic, ginger, and then onions. Then after that, fry the pepper okay. and add to it. So we're also going to add the pepper inside of this mash yes, we're making. This, yeah, sure. And then fry it. Fry it yeah. uh, you already have the rice boiling. I yes. see some. Um, oil on heat. Heat, yeah. Uh, so the chicken, what's going to happen to that? That's what we're serving. Uh, yeah, we are serving okay. it with you. Okay. Um, I didn't ask before, but what are these? These, um, these salt and uh, these um, yeah, seasoning. Seasoning. Yeah, okay. To just All make right. it. Yeah. Grand. So how long have you been cooking for? Um, I can't remember since you were born. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I've been cooking for like five years now. Five years. Yeah. Is it difficult to start being, um, if I want to be a cook, for instance, I can no, just no, begin? No, it's not difficult. It's not difficult. Yeah. But most of your meals are your own design, your own recipes sure. and all of that. Sure. So is this one of those ones that's your own thing? Yeah, this one is mine. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. And the name again, let me remember. Black pepper. Black pepper shito. I don't know what that shito is. That shito means you can eat it with anything. Is that a Nigerian word? No. That, that came from Ghana. Ghana? Yeah. Are you Ghanaian? No, I'm not the Ghanaian, I'm okay. Togolese. Okay. You're Togolese? Yeah, I'm ah, Togolese, yeah. Uh, do you speak French? Yeah, sure. Okay, well, when, when Mary gets back, I'll ask her to speak some French with you, but uh, mon français, uh, pour français, uh, it's rubbish French, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, okay. I'll cheat you. But hey, I'll be glad, I'll yeah. be glad. And more onions going in there, yes? Yes. All right. You okay. have to put more onions so that you can have that taste. Okay. That's All right. That's interesting. Yeah. So this is a Togolese dish. Yeah. Or oh, Ghanaian rather. Ghan Ghanaian? Yeah, Ghanaian is Ghanaian, Ghanaian yeah, dish. dish. Yeah. But um, their jollof is not better than our jollof, is it? I'll, Ghanaian jello is the best. Hey! <laughs> please, yeah, come Ghanaian and Ghanaian take him out best. of here. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Actually, the truth is, I kind of agree with you. I know they'll kill me after this, but hey. They do serve some great jollof. We might be able to match that sometimes. So, all right. We're going to fry the pepper. Okay. Oh, just like that. Yeah. It's not going to start making me cough in the air. You know. That's why you don't have to make the oil too. The oil too. Okay. Hot, so that's. Okay, so that's a hack. Yeah. So, don't make the oil too hot. So the um. The, what, you, what you call the fumes from the pepper doesn't choke you. Yeah. That's a new one. I'm going to tell my wife, definitely. And not too much black. Not too much black. Yeah. It's already turning black, I yeah, can see. Yeah, so just, I think it's okay. It's okay That's this it. way, yeah. We're done with that. Yeah. Oh, wow. So okay, so you off. scoop it out. Yeah. Okay. Let me get you a, oh, okay, can't find it. I think it's fine. Okay, great. Okay. So max, maybe like one minute, a few seconds. Yeah, a few seconds is okay. It's okay. Yeah. Ah. But what else can I use these black pepper for? Or oh, is this the one that's always on the table when I visit these restaurants that's gran granulated and put on the same black pepper, yeah? Yes, 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 it's the same. Mm, okay. It's the same. Everybody has their own way. Yeah. Some per people blend it, actually. Uh -huh. Okay. So. All right. Okay, personally, what I do with black pepper when I get to the restaurants is the first thing I ask them for is, raw tomatoes and then I just sprinkle some of that black pepper on it and I eat it like so. I actually love it. It's fantastic. A bit oh, of salt. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, I can smell it already. Yeah. I can smell it already. Yeah. That's nice. Okay. Tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, while we are um, getting all this mashed together and all, we are going to go to Mary and uh, she's got some interesting discussion inside of etiquette uh, this morning with Janet. So let's see what's happening. Uh, she, of course, you want to remember, is a very interesting person to always learn these um, very interesting ethics from. So, Mary, what do we have? Thank you very much. Indeed, we are back with Etiquette, uh, where we are joined by the CEO of GSK Consultant. Uh, she will be giving tips on car transit etiquette. It's always an interesting time with Janet. Uh, hello, Janet. How are you doing? Uh, I'm good, thank you. Good morning. Good How are you morning. doing too? Very well, thank you. Great to have you on the show. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, so Janet, you know how it is uh, when people are in transit, people have different habits. 
I know for sure that there are times when you just want to put your feet up on the dashboard, relax, and maybe <laughs> doze off. But I can tell that you're already cringing at that thought. So, so <laughs> when it comes to, <laughs> to transit etiquette, tell us more about it. Well, you know what I'm going to start off with? I'm going to start with your in-car, within-the-car etiquette. Because okay. that's where it really starts okay. off. You know, and it's like, is your car or your vehicle or your bus, whatever it is that you're driving, is it home away from home or is it a pigsty? Hmm. You know, I mean, this is where it starts. Because it's all about your image. And I'll ask you a couple of questions. What are you guilty of? Hmm. And what is your image like inside your vehicle? right because mm. it says a lot about who you are and mm. there's so many etiquette breaches that we see first and foremost right mm. i love the one that you said about putting your feet up on the dashboard yes <laughs> some people wouldn't mind doing that the whole art of sleeping in the car number one is a no-no because of the odor and the bacteria that it generates you know because sometimes you may even you may do it yourself or you might have a driver that does it. Sleeping in a vehicle is an absolute no-no because it's, you know, it, the, the whole odor and the whole bacteria generation is bad. But there are some common things that a lot of people tend to do. And of course, top of the list is really eating in the car. Now, nothing wrong with eating in the car, but the problem is the aftermath. Do you eat with the windows all wound up? You can imagine what's gonna come out of that, the, the smell of the food. But what about the empty packets, the empty wrappers, the empty bottles, right? And the empty containers that people tend to drop in the car thinking maybe later I'll clear it up. You're making your car a dump style. Mm -hmm. And if you have children mm -hmm. that eat as well, you can imagine. So really and truly a lot of very busy, busy women and some men too, if you enter the car, you'll be amazed at mm. what you see. Yeah. This is, this is really bad because some people don't even take the time, you know, to you know, clean the car on a regular basis sure. or even at least once a week. Cleaning mm. of the car is extremely important because so many things just come up and creep up into that your vehicle. So you mm. know, you, you should have an air freshener in that vehicle, at mm -hmm. least the car freshener at mm. all times. A sanitizer is good and some handy water, a bottle of water, even in the boots, just for whatever emergency. Mm. Not, not, without mm. a doubt, tissue paper should be in that vehicle mm. at all times, right? Mm. And hand wipes, if you can, if you're one of those things. Now, what should stay in your car and what should go? Or okay. what should stay in your vehicle or what should go? Because there's a whole lot of magazines and papers and even old newspapers that pile up in the vehicle and, you mm. know, that make the car a complete mess. And even old papers and receipts and even old papers and receipts and you name it. People just dump the receipts, you know, <laughs> all over the vehicle mm. and it just piles up. Mm. So recognize what should stay. Of course, never, never, never leave your laptop bag in the vehicle. Okay. Okay, because uh, things that people will have their eyes prying on, a bag inside the vehicle of any sort, even if it's got anything inside it, is just an eye catcher for somebody who is prowling around looking for what to get from someone's sure, car. True. Sure. Right. So you yeah. don't want to keep things like that in your car to the visibility of someone else. Mm. If it has to be in your vehicle, yeah. then stay in the boot. But you know what? If I were you, take everything out of your vehicle. Keep your things with you at all times and put your, bring your things into the car. Don't take too many things. People are hoarders. They take a whole lot of things in the vehicle. They don't need them, right? And the car just keeps piling up. Mm. Then I want to also mention the fact that, you know, even with keys, it's mm. very easy to lose your keys when you put your keys in the vehicle and, mm. you know, God forbid, um, anything happens to your vehicle and you lose your keys, not just lose those keys, keys to very important places. Hmm. And don't put important hmm. documents in your bag, like your passport or your um, ID card or things that really suggest this is your identity hmm. that says who you are, hmm. probably has your address on it and all of that. Please be very careful. Now, hmm. my dear sweet ladies, hmm. it's always, you know, we're in a hurry, we're in a hurry, we want to do our makeup in the vehicle, whether it's a bus, whether it's a car, whatever the beauty of the car is, whatever status of the car is, car is a car, hmm. right? And if you put your makeup in the car, fine, but there's a huge tendency that you're going to stay in that vehicle. A lot okay. of men complain a lot when they see makeup here, there, and everywhere on the, you know, <laughs> on the car, on the window. And True. Be careful. A towel. If you have to do your makeup in the car, always carry along a towel. Lay your towel on your lap first. Do your makeup so that anything that spills around powder, it's around you. And you can easily wipe your hands against your towel as well. Hmm. So careful not to stain. It's so easy to stain the handle, and men just don't like hmm. that at all. 
No, sure. you have to go to do exercise and you have to drive to the place. Or, you know, you take a vehicle to wherever you're doing your exercise or even to the gym. When you're coming back, you're sweaty and you're smelly. Now be mindful because mm. that's going to leave an after smell in your vehicle, okay? And so you, you definitely need to have air freshener at that point in time. Um, sweat and smell and grime is not nice for the car at all. Mm. So if you are the car yeah. owner, wipe down your vehicle, do a good clean, wipe down, even if you can't do a complete car wash, wipe it down because you have sat into that seat and you have sweated into that seat as well. Mm. Bacteria creeps up everywhere. You touch that steering with your dirty hands, mm. right? Or you've mm. seen somebody pick their nose or your driver has picked their nose or whatever oh and they touch the steering and you decide that you want to quickly dash to the supermarket and you quickly get onto the car. Remember, wipe down your steering at all times, whether you're the one using the vehicle or someone else is using the vehicle for you. Always wipe down your steering because that's where bacteria stays the most. And it goes straight to your hands. Hello? And for that purpose, it's usually <laughs> best to have wipes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was saying yes, for that purpose, always, it's good to have the wipes, yes. Always have your wipes. And sometimes, you know what, because of the little, little crumbs from biscuits and crisps and sweets and stuff that you have eaten that you really can't see, micro crumbs, yeah. Yeah. there will be little bugs in your vehicle. Where you can't see them. So you might, you once in a while, you know, spray down your vehicle mm. at night, close mm. the windows so that that can help kill off all the creepy bugs that are in your car that you actually cannot see, right? Mm. Be mindful about throwing things out of the window. People tend to do that quite a bit uh, as they're driving, sure. as they're moving, they throw things out of the window. No, no, no. There are some countries that you get heavily fined just by throwing things out of the window. One mm. thing again, too, that we mm. do not like that happens, it's quite natural, is gassing. Gassing yes. in the vehicle. Now, you know what? Winding down the window doesn't really, <laughs> doesn't really cut it, right? So, and sometimes you can't help it, of course, but that's why, you know, you... Uh, well, it's, it's, just, it's just as you said. In most cases, people can't help it. These things happen. And then, unfortunately, you know the AC might be on and <laughs> everyone just has to take it in. Uh, but you know but what? You know what we're going okay. to do, Janet. Unfortunately, we do not have uh, enough time to continue with this. We've talked about etiquette yeah. in the car. Hopefully, we'll talk about yeah. etiquette outside uh, transit as well. Uh, for now, though, Absolutely. I must say very big thank you to you for your time. You're have welcome. a great day. Right. Thank you so you have much. have a great day ahead. Thank Take you. Thank you very much. Well, it's time for a quick break. We will be back before you know it. Stay with us as Wake Up Nigeria. Well, all right. So, I guess... Mm. We're welcome inside of tech today. Yes. And we have mm, some very definitely. interesting uh, conversations over some very interesting tech. Introduce me. I'm your uh, guest, Jam. Your tech guest. Uh, many. <laughs> Introduce me. Let me. You would also give your yeah. guest here champagne it's, and pizza. What or kind something. of guest? He's the in house guy. Jay. His name <laughs> is Mike. Is that even the three guests here? You guys know him already. I'm, I'm putting up, I'm, I'm sending a report to you. I'm it's sending okay. an official. Anyhow, report. so we have very interesting stuff okay. here. Okay. Yes. So very I hear that there's good stuff about Apple Watch recently. Yes, yes. Um, just in case you didn't know, mm. the Apple Watch now yeah. has um, the Google, Map Google back Maps on it. back on it. They used to be on it. It used to be on it before. Um, it went out in 2017. The good thing about the Apple Watch is the testimonies that have come from the Apple Watch. Wonderful. There are things that cannot happen. Even though you have an Apple Watch in Nigeria, these ones are not integrated into the Nigerian tech okay. e ecosystem yet. Mm. But in the US and, of course, other parts of Europe, there are a lot of things your Apple Watch can do. Okay. Apple Watch has saved lives. Now, for instance, somebody, uh, there's a story about a, a man who actually fainted or he, he blanked out in his bathroom, okay. hit his head on the floor and blanked out. The Apple Watch detects your heart rate mm. and it will send, send an, a, message. a message to your hospital oh. that already has an integration with the Apple system. Mm. So what happens is that your hospital says, oh, this guy's heart rate has dropped, even without send an you ambulance. or your pulse, mm -hmm. you understand? or your pulse, of course, uh, that's, you see some features of the Apple Watch there, mm -hmm. or your pulse has dropped, or this guy is not breathing well, okay. and your hospital sends an ambulance immediately. Wow, that's interesting. Now, this is also integrated with the fire system. Mm -hmm. It's also integrated with, uh, so there's this lady who had an accident, serious accident with her nine-year-old, oh. and they were trapped in the car. Without her, the, the, the Apple Watch already sent info to the hospital, ambulance rushed there, sent her location, said she was in crisis, without her even doing anything on it. Wow. That is, you understand? So that's, that integration is where we are lacking in Africa, uh, most parts of ask, Africa and so Nigeria. If you had that kind of an instance in Nigeria, let's say somewhere in, uh, I don't know if you know, 
So which message is it going to send and where? So, okay, now, the point is this now. If that was going to work, the hospital would have to have an application or something mm -hmm. that is integrated, that's already integrated that's already inside of the watch. with the system. Mm. The fire service and all of that, which is what we don't have. You know, you, you, know, you remember when um, the noise was up about digital ID? We're yeah. scared as Africans, like, oh, it's the mark, it's this. You have to have a society that is digitally linked mm -hmm. for these kind of things to happen. Yeah. That is why it can happen now. Yeah, and Our society is not yet digitally linked. I, I was using Google Maps on Saturday and mm. it gave me this very long roundabout um, uh, path to get to my destination. Yeah. And then just as I was about to use it, I noticed that there was just the U-turn here and okay. I made that U-turn and from 13 minutes, which it told me it was going to take, it became three minutes. Three and minutes. I'm like, now you see the thing with Google Maps. There? Yes. Now, the, up, the now Google Maps. Yeah, you see, you see something that has to happen. Eh? Uh, like I said, our society is not as digitally connected as mm -hmm. other places. Now, due to that, when something, when a new road opens up, yeah. it doesn't really get so much updated. Now, there are people that update. If you go to Europe and all of that, Google Maps will have an update for almost everything that comes up at, uh, by the second. Mm -hmm. Sometimes roads are closed and you don't get the, uh, the notification in time on Google yes. Maps. You understand? So what happens is that the moment we get digitally enhanced more All of as a society, these things will become better. Our Google Maps will become more accurate. Yes, at times, it has helped me a lot, but then there are a few times when this kind of thing happens. You know, it does happen. It happens. It's part of the, you know, the, the, the risks that are involved with technology, but I dare say that for the Apple Watch, of course, it's a very good one. Let's hope that this kind of thing can happen you know, uh, faster here. Mm -hmm. But that's it, that's it, that's, that's it. Beautiful. The Apple Watch. Google Not a big Watch. fan, but hey, hey. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat. Are you yeah. a gaming fan? Yes, definitely, definitely. I know what games did to me when I was much younger. Did you pass your exams? Um, uh, <laughs> I, I, I did pass, but I definitely would probably have done better, better huh? if I wasn't gaming as much as okay, I was gaming when okay. I was much younger. So the new Xbox S series so is yes. unveiling. Man. However, let me just use this time to say the new uh, PS5 was yeah. not really anything big. It, it wasn't, was, yeah? It was the same thing. They just changed the pack. But, okay, so let's, let's take a look at this video. Actually yeah, let's take a look at this video, and then we'll come talk about it. Let's look at the, the unveiling of the Xbox. Series S. S. Interesting graphics and all it that. It is, it is. Now, um, it, it's been known for a while that when it comes to graphics, uh, Xbox has a little bit, they might, a lot of people say that they have a little bit of an edge over the PlayStation or really? Sony series. Yes, they do, they do. I mean, I don't considering think that so. you know that Microsoft now owns Xbox and uh, uh -huh. these are the guys that make um, graphic cards for your systems and all of that. And when it comes to graphics, they're a little bit, yeah. So obviously I would say so. you're an Xbox guy. Not really, no, 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 you're definitely. PS? More of Sony. But you see one interesting thing here, Xbox, they are doing one over Sony and this is why. Okay. Sony came up with the PS5. Now, they released their consoles almost at the same time, and they have almost the same specifications and all of that. Now, Xbox released the Series X, mm -hmm. which is going to come about the same time Sony's coming out. But then they released a version. Now, there's a Series X and there's a Series S. S. Now, you know what the thing with the S? The S is a cheaper version of the X, a smaller version oh. of the X, but the major difference is just the resolution. Ah. But you, you have almost the same thing you have with the X ah. in the S. Now, this is the big part. The S with all that it has, is just about $300. Nigerian money now, just say about 120K. Mm. By the time the PS5 comes out, they've not released the price. They are mm. looking at well over, say, 200, 250, 300,000 Naira. Mm -hmm. And then they bring you an option of getting the same level of graphics with the PS5 on the Series S, yeah. cheaper price. Mm, Check mm. out. So they are trying to. So it's, it's almost like when we release phones. It's, yeah, there's a much there's cheaper version, version that has that version, almost yeah. everything. That's what Xbox is doing. It might be a wise move from them because, of course, uh, 
I mean, Sony has has it when it comes to Africa here, but then this might just be a wise move from them. Oh, let's see, let's see. Are you gonna get it? Mm, uh, no, the series, uh, no, probably. I'm, 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 I'm a Sony guy. Oh, okay. So, but then let, let, if the price is low, maybe it might drop down a little bit low. You will <laughs> like Talahi. This is like Marzino's 50th invention no, <laughs> that he's the one. No, but seriously, it's fantastic anyway. It is, great it stuff. Is. That's it. That's Alrighty. It. So, hey, let's see what's happening in the kitchen. It used to be my kitchen, but Mary is in there. I think I'll join them after. But Mary, what are you doing with my food with Chef John? Last time I checked, your name is not engraved on the table, so be still. <laughs> All right, uh, welcome again to the kitchen. Chef John is still quite busy here. Uh, we're making black pepper. That's what's for breakfast this morning. Uh, so what is in here right now? This um, the ginger, onions, and garlic, and the crayfish. Ginger, onion, garlic, the garlic and, and crayfish. crayfish. Okay, so wh what are we doing next? We have to, uh, next now we pour the black pepper in. Okay. Okay, so you fried the black pepper. Yes, Did I you fried. season it? No, I didn't season it. No seasoning. Just dry, normal dry pepper, then you fry it. Okay. After that, you add it to the... Um, to the ginger, garlic, garlic and this thing um, you blend it. Okay, yeah. okay. So we are going to grind this. Yeah. Are we going to grind it to paste the same way the other one is? Yes. Okay, okay, go ahead. Yeah. So what will happen afterwards? After that, you fry it. Oh, you're still going to fry it yeah, again? Yeah, just a little bit. Okay. Because everything is done here. Okay. So you just have to fry it a little bit. Okay, just to ensure it's properly cooked. Yeah, sure. Okay, okay. So what are we doing with the chicken? The chicken is to garnish it with the black pepper and rice. That, okay, yeah. okay, okay. So it's just to serve it with To it. serve it, yes. Okay. To serve it with it. Okay. Okay, so, well, it, it does look really, really easy, really easy. Yeah. And, uh, well, I can't wait uh, to find out what it will be like at the end of the show. Yeah. Looks like a lot of work to all that grinding. Uh, the second hour of the show is over. We rose just ahead of you and ahead of the sun. Two hours later, here we are, and um, here we... Oh, okay. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm actually enjoying that book. What yeah, are you I can't wait for book charts. Oh. <laughs> yes, I just okay. wanted to quickly go through some That's things okay. again. Wow. But yes, uh, you know they say the secret to finishing is starting, and I'm quite close to doing just that. Exactly. It's been a great time on the show so far, really. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so our kitchen is ever alive with our extremely talented chef John in the building this morning, and um, yes, we can already. Smell that goodness. Ah. <laughs> well, so many other things we've run through, really. Uh, take a look at that planting, for example. Ah, My gosh. nice golden brown. Yeah, nice, really nice. Well, if you just joined us, we have 45 minutes to spend with you uh, till we draw the curtain on today's show. And we get better every single hour, but first, please know that my name is Mazino Appeal. As he likes to say it all the time. <laughs> and my name is Mary Bashua Alimi. Now, stream the show live and all the shows as well on TVC at TVC entertainment.tv and on Facebook at TVC Connect. Our super duper app is also available for download on both Android and iOS store. Nice. It allows you to watch us from absolutely anywhere in the world and we say that all the time because that's what it is. Yes, and you know for exciting uh, videos, especially episodes on Wake Up Nigeria, please subscribe to our YouTube channel TVC Entertainment. My word, hey. Some bundle. Hey, 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 fish fronts, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we have two very special wishes to send out mm. to people uh, who are very dear to TVC Communications. So, uh, yes, uh, the first is to uh, Chidera Anele, who is the brand manager of snacks at UAC Foods. Today is your special day, and we are wishing you a very happy birthday and many happy returns, of course. Mm, yes. Snacks. I love people that are in charge of snacks. <laughs> yes, because you both love food so much. People no, 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 in no, no, HR, no. people in charge of snacks is this thing. The other one, Jerry, <laughs> <laughs> goes out to Shun Adara Mola, who is the marketing director of West Africa for Visa. And a very happy one to you as well uh, from all of us here at TVC Communications. Yes, happy birthday, happy birthday. to you both. You all are part you of have it. a fantastic time. You all are part of a September mm, uh, group of people. Uh, yeah. There's okay, a lot I of I wanted to say bad words more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> September, <laughs> September, like Mary said, Tommy Sopi happened yeah. last December. Yes, it's September to remember. Remember. Mm, oh, okay. so that means December is just the period when. Uh, uh, we are keeping an eye on that. What did they call it the last time? Um, uh, mad December, bad, dirty, dirty December. December. Oh! 
<laughs> How dirty was that it's December for you? It was two years year. ago. See, that's it. So the dirtiest one was two years ago. Last year's one wasn't as dirty. As dirty. Okay, yeah, the yeah, main one was two years ago. Two right. December ago. It was the year before. Oh that was the dirty December. Oh, that was dirty girl. Oh. Me, I know for sure that Tokwe had a very dirty 2019 mm -hmm. December. Oh. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's not dirty like... It's just a... D-E-T-T-Y. Dirty. I know, D-E-T-T-Y. Yeah, that's what we mean. Okay, okay, okay. So, we're here, Ibrahim is on standby. He is very dapper and clean. I don't think these are the kind of people that have dirty Decembers, but oh. I might be wrong. So <laughs> let's, uh, let's find out what he has for the news, though. Welcome to the news. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control reported 176 new cases of coronavirus overnight, taking the country's total number of cases to 55,632. This time, the federal capital territory recorded the highest number with 40 new infections. Lagos came in second uh, place with 34 new cases, followed by Plateau with 26. So far, for the 3,610 people have been discharged, while 1,070 people have died from COVID-19 complications. The leadership of the National Association of Resident Doctors says it will convene a meeting of its National Executive Committee today. The meeting is with the, with the view to considering the latest agreement reached with the government on the pending labor disputes. The president of the association, Sokomba Liu, described Wednesday's meeting brokered by Minister of Labor and Productivity, Chris Ngige, as fruitful. A two-week timeline was agreed on for the payment of 4 billion Nera medical residency training cash to the striking resident doctors. Discussion for the review of permanent hazard allowance is also to commence. The National Association of Resident Doctors says with the agreements reached with government, it may call off its strike soon. And the federal government directed chief medical doctors and managing directors of federal tertiary hospitals to immediately commence the use of consultants and doctors on the National Youth Service Corps to provide routine services. The government also directed that locum staff should be brought in when and where necessary to forestall services disruption when applicable and affordable. Minister of Health Osage Hanwe gave the directive in a statement issued on Wednesday on, on, in Abuja on Wednesday while reacting to the nationwide strike by resident doctors over the non-payment of their COVID-19 hazard allowance and other demands. According to him, he says, quote, emergency services should continue to run as before Routine services should be maintained with consultants, NYC doctors, local staff, well, staffers to be brought in when and where necessary to forestall services disruption when applicable and affordable, end of quote. And away from the resident doctor strike, Nigeria has overtaken India as the world capital for under five deaths. This is according to the 2020 mortality estimates released by United Nations Children's Fund. The development comes two years earlier than the World Bank projected. The report, which covered a period of three decades, 1990 to 2019, added that 49% of all under five deaths in 2019 occurred in just five countries, Nigeria, India, Pakistan, uh, and Democratic Republic of Congo and Ethiopia. India has at least six times the population of Nigeria. The report says, uh, say, uh, said rather, other five mortality rates have declined by almost 60% since 1990. However, the UN expressed concerns that the potential of a mortality crisis in 2020 threatens years of remarkable improvement in child and adolescent survival. The Economic Community of West African States has postponed the planned launch of its single currency, that's the ECHO. The body agreed to maintain a gradual approach for the launching of the currency, adding that a new date for the launch would be announced later. This was contained in a communique issued at the end of the 57th uh, Summit of the Heads of State and Government of ECOWAS earlier on Tuesday. The body insists the postponement is in order to consolidate its achievements. And as the news on Wake Up Nigeria today, Sports News is next with Mike. Well. You're welcome back inside the kitchen here. I've regained the kitchen back from Mary. And if you're just joining us, we are making pepper shito, black pepper, pepper shito. shito yeah. This is uh, Chef um, John, and of course, my name is Mazino Apio. So if you've missed all of this, we have a mash here of some garlic, onions, black pepper, and crayfish. crayfish. 
And uh, let's see what the ingredients are. You can see them on your screen right now. We have very interesting ingredients to this. Garlic, ginger, onions, crayfish, seasoning, red pepper, and vegetable oil. You can see how easy it is to make. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and fry this. And uh, hey, chef, over to you. What's, uh, what's about to happen right now? Yeah, I'm about to fry it a little bit after I found it and everything. Blink. Okay. So I'll fry it right. just a little, a little bit, mm. not to... Remember, we have a hack to this. Don't let the oil get too hot so it doesn't go up in the air and choke you. <clears throat> if you know what I mean. But, uh, oh, that looks like it's going to be grand. So now I see why it's called black pepper shita because yeah. it is black actually and it might get even darker by the time we're done. Yeah. That's interesting. If you remember, we had fried this from earlier, the pepper itself, before we mashed it in with the mix. This is the second time we're frying it all yeah. again. But there's so much oil. Is that how it, that's how it's supposed to be served? Mm, not really. Okay. Mm. Okay, so it depends how much oil you want to Yes, use. you want to. All right, okay. That's good, that's good. How long do we need to fry this for? Mm, just some, for like two minutes. Two minutes, yeah. okay. All right. Uh, I noticed some chicken from before. That's already cooked, yes. yes. So at the end of it, we're going to have this garnishing the chicken. The chicken, yeah. Can be served as breakfast, like yeah. you said from before. Wow. I can't wait. I can't wait. I guess I know who's going to be attacking this one once we are done. Yeah. So remember, once again, it's a, it's a, ga ga a Ghanaian dish. Yeah, it's a Ghanaian dish. Shito, however, is a yeah. Togolese word, if I'm not mistaken, yeah? And it's being cooked here in Nigeria. <laughs> so we've done the whole Equus, or at least a, a few of the countries. Yes. In it. How can they find you, by the way, on social media, just in case they want to see a few of your recipes? Um, I've already have it on social media. Mm -hmm. Now, what's your name on social media, your handle on social media? Oh, a Chef Nobuchon. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Very well, let's just put it on screen for you guys. Okay, it's on screen right now because uh, okay. I can't even repeat it again. Chef what? Nobu John. Nobu John. John. Okay, yeah. I thought it was another language. Oh, good. No, no, Nobu John. <laughs> All right, then. Chef Nobu John, John. is on uh, your screen. So, hey, make sure you follow him. You can ask him a few questions if you're trying to make this yes, at yeah. home. Send him a message and he's going to perhaps maybe respond to you immediately and tell you exactly what you can do correctly or if you're not doing it correctly and all the hacks that he's given us today. Um, so now we're done with the frying. Yeah. What next? Now we start the plate. Plate. Oh, yes. Now wait for the plating. Yeah. Let me give you some room there. I like to get busy in the kitchen myself sometimes, but um, not much of any help. Yeah, you only just help people move things around. All right. So there's our chicken, if you're yeah. at home, and there's our plantain already fried. We have some carrots and spring onions. Are those spring onions? No, no spring onions. What are those? Carrots, green, and, um, green, green beans. Green beans, yeah. oh, green beans, Carrot and, and our rice. Yeah. All right. We're going to begin the plating. Um, before the end of the show, you'll see everything already nicely plated. But go ahead, please. Let's already start. We have our uh, plates and stuff, and black pepper she tore yeah. growing it. Oh, oh, now I see. Mm. So we can, we eat that with the rice, nothing else, just that, like, uh, yeah, just like the traditional yeah. stew and yeah. rice. Yeah. So this is black pepper she tore and rice. Rice, yes. Now I get it. All right, okay. And some rice. You can actually eat it with yam. Okay. Yeah, that was what I was thinking. Yam, potatoes, yeah. Yeah, like potatoes. the regular stuff yes. that we do. Yeah. Uh, substitute rice for anything. Yeah. What kind of rice is that? It looks different. Basmati rice. Oh, okay. Basmati. I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay. And. I think this is more. All right, so we have our plantain going in there. So remember, it's called black pepper shita, and we have the ingredients and everything. We'll have them up on our social media pages, and uh, you can ask any question that you need. So while we're doing all of this, getting the plating ready and all, 
uh, give you the final pro uh, process or products <laughs> in just about a few minutes. Uh, let's see what's happening out in the garden. I hear Mike is in the garden and he's got something very, very interesting. Oh yes, it's art display. We already told you who's coming in. You will be amazed by the level of art you're about to witness. So let's take it over to the garden and see what's happening there. I have quite an interesting personality this morning. I love the art segment because art is creativity at its utmost best. Very, very interesting personality to talk with this morning. Sly Megida. Yeah. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Great to have you. You're welcome. Thank ah, you very all right, what's up? So, I like his name, by the way, Sly Megida. Sly, yeah. definitely Sylvester. Are you Hausa? No. Okay, so why the Megida? Okay, um, they call my dad Megida. Mm. I feel like. As I grew up, people started calling me Megida, Megida Junior. I'm like, okay, let me add the Megida to the Sly, and that should be Sly Megida. Sly Megida, yeah. wonderful. <laughs> How long have you been doing art, by the way? So I've been doing art for three years now, mm. and it has been quite fun. It has been, well, so normally I talk to a lot of artists. I actually spoken to a lot, and you see many of them, they have that talent from when they were children, and they were, they were encouraged. But you started just three years ago. So what happened? Like, uh, did it just come now, or it was always there? You see, let's hear your story. It has always been there, like since childhood. But the thing is, I left it because I felt like, okay, this thing is not really serious. How can this pay me? How can mm, this, you know? I was just, I was just. And they forced you to do science. They forced me to do science. <laughs> oh, okay. So I, I wanted to be an. I, I dreamt of okay, maybe I'll be an engineer or mm. something. So, I, I just saw that thing in me that okay, I had something for creativity, entertainment, mm. and mm. lifestyle. Mm. So I was like, okay, how does my art talent come in play with this? Wow. So <clears throat> it was something that I discovered in 2015 that I said, okay, let me go into art because a friend of mine advised me, it's like, mm. you can do this a little, why don't mm. you develop, develop yourself? Develop it, wonderful. So with that, I said, okay, I, I, I will look into that. Like wonderful. I told you, I said, if I can draw five random people, if I can sketch five random people and they like it, mm. I post it on Instagram and they like it, I'll continue doing art. And that was how it started. And that was how it started. Wonderful. Now, before we'll talk about how he looks, because he himself is an artwork, because yeah. I'm not very sure he's going to go with this thing. Where is he looking? <laughs> we'll block him at the gate. But let's talk about this beautiful piece right here in front of me. What is this piece titled? And tell us about it. So this is brown skin. Mm. Brown skin. Your skin just like <laughs> So when you look That's at it, you yeah. see you see Africa already. You see the mm. sun. You mm. see how it is. So this tells us that with the brown skin we have, mm. it is beautiful. Okay. Do not bleach. Do I not like tone this. your skin. I like this. Always wear the smile on your face. That brings out the confidence in you. We Africans, we are kings and queens, you know. Ah, <laughs> I like this. I like this picture. I love the smile. I love the message that you were uh, putting out with this yeah. one. Brown skin. Brown I like skin. this. I like this. Very lovely. Okay, now I can see a downfall there. Slide me down. Let's talk about that one. Okay, okay. And then um, uh, this, uh, this is... Uh, I hope you know that the downfall does a wonderful job to the city of Lagos. Very this true. is something that once you see the downfall, you know you are in Lagos. When we see... I, I think it was in France somewhere. I saw the yellow downfall and, and people were like, Oh, no, no, no. This is the insignia. This is how you know Lagos. So yes, this is one way to identify us. What's the story behind this? Okay, so this is one so. Um, this tells you that the bus is the primary place where people from all walks of life, you know, get to meet. I'm telling you, I'm telling so you, man. So I titled this one so. It, it tells the story of the journey. Wow. You get. So when people are in the bus. So this is this is abstract. I know this by is the way. Abstract. This is abstract. Yes. These are the people in the bus actually. Mm. So I use the color of the downfall to you know to show you the people in the bus. When, in the bus, when you're in the bus, you think of two things, where you're heading to and what's currently happening in the bus. Hmm. 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 That's how the life journey is. I want to be a great artist. I'm thinking of where I'm heading to and what is happening currently around me. Around you. So in the bus, you get, you get to meet people, you make friends, you have a lot of, you know, a lot of things happening in the bus. If you, if you know the, the Lagos downfall bus, you see some people fighting with the conductor for their change and stuff. So there's always a lot of things going on in the okay, bus. Okay, wonderful. So when you're in the bus, it is one soul. Mm. So in the life journey, you have your one soul. We are connected with the process, what wonderful. is happening around, around you, you and where you're heading to. I like that, I like that. Now, this we save uh, not the best for the last, but it is the most intriguing 
piece of artwork I have here this morning. Come over, come over. Okay. Let's talk about this one. This is intriguing. I'm looking forward to this one and the story. It's the biggest one here. <laughs> Very intriguing. Uh, Megida, what is this? What does I mean? She she's definitely doing drugs here. Yeah. What is the story behind this? What, what's the title? And what's the story behind this? You know. If when you look at this, you say uh, "say no to drugs." That's what comes to your mind. That's mm. what comes to your head. But I titled this. The Some people drug. might not say because okay. So now I'm just I'm just trying to play the other side. Some people might say, but I'm not seeing the signal that says no. That it seems like. Uh, it's something I can do. Like I don't know. It, like, maybe some people might say it's glorifying. It's looking, it. it's looking good. Yeah, know. like you know. So, <clears throat> I titled this "The Drug of Art." Um, the I feel drug like of art. The drug of art. So I feel like a lot of youths these days are channeling their energy the wrong way. Okay. Uh, they are disturbed about a lot of things instead of bringing out, having time to you know spend time on your like on your own, bring out that creativity in yourself. You know, channel it in life so that we can make a change in the world today. You understand? So I thought this is the drug of art because my own drug is art. Creativity does everything for me. Like art is like a normal lifestyle for me. Like the day-to-day -day activities, everything I do, I, I make sure, as I'm talking to you, I make sure I'm creative. That creative energy is always there with me. Mm. So anytime I think, anytime everything I do, I make sure I think through properly. So the drug of art is just to tell people that Stop channeling your energy the wrong way. You're not a big boy if you're doing the highest drug or something, but channel your energy the, the right the way right so way. that we can right make way. a change into this Man, I, I really enjoy talking to this guy. Now let's talk about what you're wearing. This is the final piece of art <laughs> we're doing this morning. Yeah. He is going to be... Okay, let's move this way. Okay. Let's move this way. Let's talk about what you're wearing. Now, um, if he doesn't talk something that I like so much, he's not going to go with this thing. <laughs> Like, I love what you just did. That's a normal pants trouser, right? Yeah, that's a normal pants trouser. It's a normal trousers. pants trouser. Yeah. But you've done something wonderful on it. What's this? And how did you come up with this? Okay, so this is my tribal collection. Because, you see, I'm a pop artist. I'm an Afro-pop artist. It's not about um, just doing humans or still life drawings. I do abstracts. And these abstract paintings help me build my story, like, properly because okay. I enjoy doing abstract. Mm. So this tribal, it shows you that, okay, I am an African. Anywhere I wear this to tell you that, ah, I am an African. You see the whole tribal, the whole Ilei Fair mm. and all those things on it. So it just shows you that I am an African. This is my own tribal collection. Wow. So this is, I really like this. And you also did it to- Yeah, I did to, it on my the, shoe. To the kicks also, it's, man. It's, it's like, wow. it's like a round, all round something. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. If this guy doesn't arrange how is, I'm going to get my own. Evans is here with me. And we're going to, we're going to pull him. The pants is not going with him. Yeah. But this is wonderful. Kudos. Well much. done. Keep Thank on doing what you're doing. You're doing wonderful. How do you hit you up on social media? Just hit me up, Sly Megida. Sly Megida. Wonderful. On Twitter, hit on this Instagram. guy up. He's talented. Sly he knows what he's doing. Thank you very much, Sly Megida. Yeah. For it's time for us to have book chat. I'm actually excited about this. It's been ages, I know, right? Now, today we have Behind the Little Bundles of Joy. This is a book by Ibukun Omolulu, and it tells the story of a naive uh, first-time mother as an author, a speaker, and a seasoned banker with over 14 years of professional experience. Uh, she has joined us today to talk about this beautifully written book and i'm not exaggerating Ibuku. this is a beautiful book how are you doing today hi good morning it's a pleasure to be here i'm so excited <laughs> <laughs> good morning you know what i love the good most morning. about your book the honesty in it it's amazing <laughs> it must have taken a lot for you to literally pour out your soul because that's what i could feel at some point i was close to tears reading some of it, especially, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, especially when you talked about the whole uh, journey of uh, IVF and all, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Some people are just encountering this book uh, for the first time. So here's what I'm going to ask you first. Yeah. What inspired your sharing your experience through this book? <laughs> Thank you so much for that question. Um, it came from a place of, um, from my own experience, I mean, I had my first son, and um, the truth of the matter is they do not prepare us enough when it comes to childbirth and pregnancy. True. And researchers have also discovered that the 
biggest time for people to get divorced is really after the after the birth of yes, the child, and yes, particularly the birth of the first child. And so, in my own case, I had a lot of conflict with my husband. He, he and it wasn't out of spite. He probably he didn't know what to do. He was kind of clueless about the whole child birth thing. Hmm. And I was dealing with postpartum depression. I had never been a mother before. So the truth of the matter is, the journey of pregnancy, childbirth, and all it's it's a whole different ball game from what we've been told. And so I realized that there's there's a need for more awareness and um, I wanted more women to be able to prepare because the, the level of preparation you make has a big impact in my own opinion has a big <coughs> impact on you and it also has a way of um, reducing or helping you deal with postpartum depression so yes. I just felt like this is something people need to know and I need to put it out there because it almost destroyed my marriage we, we were practically at the verge of okay Let's just go away. Um, mm. But then we had to, you know, put in the work and know that, um, yeah, it's not as, as easy. And I was like, if somebody had actually helped me through this phase, maybe it would have been better. Why should I wait for a lot more people to go through this before opening up? And so yeah. it was a really difficult thing to put myself out there and very vulnerable. But I figured out the message was stronger and um, it should be heard. This is actually a level of vulnerability that one doesn't pick up on the streets. <laughs> the way you started yes. uh, with uh, just before you had your first child and uh, your experience afterwards. Now, sharing other people's experiences, getting them to share their experiences. How were you able to pull that one off? <laughs> that was really difficult because... Um, I mean, I had friends who had to share about their miscarriages. Yes. Um, and it was really difficult getting them to put it on paper. I mean, some of them were struggling to heal. Hmm. And it was, I mean, I, I was tearing up as some of them recounted their stories. But hmm. I realized the story, the message was bigger than um, a lot of the things we were going through. Yeah. So the whole thing is, um, it's a different thing. People are at different stages in their life. Mm. It's a different thing for, um, it's a different phase when you're trying to conceive. It's a different phase when you've actually conceived and you're trying to, you know, get the child out safely. It's a different phase where you've gotten out the child safely and then you have some complications or the yeah. child has complications. And I realized that there were just so many stories and people um, had gone through a lot of things. You know, we all look nice in our homes, all decked up, looking nice and all, but you really don't know the baggage people carry. And so I had to, you know, cajole, um, plead, um, you know, speak to people like, and for some, as they wrote those stories, it was their healing journey. It was their first step to, you know, opening up about it, talking, talking about it, and, you know, even shedding some tears. But I, I realized that it was a strong message. It was something that had to be out mm. there. And I was really, I couldn't get all the stories out, but I got as many as I could possibly get to, you know, just be on that book. And Believe I, me, I, I'm, I'm... You, <laughs> you got a lot of it out there. It might seem little, but it was something to be identified with. Now, before I go into <laughs> the book again itself, there are two places that caught my attention. This one, the first one yeah. is humorous. The second one, it was the one that first caught my heart and I was like, okay, what am I to expect in this book? Let me tell you about the humorous <laughs> one. It was in the foreword where you wrote, uh, thank you, you, you were dedicating it to, uh, as well to your children. I, the last line where you said, you both are going to get what's coming to you when you have kids of your own. And as I read that part, I actually burst into laughter like, gosh, I wonder what they've put her through to write this. And then the part that made my heart uh, skip a bit was um, where you dedicated it to women and men, praying and hoping and trusting God for their own miracles. And then you went on to talk about to every aching heart who has lost a baby or had to go through abortion for one reason or the other. Now, at the point I read this, I did not quite understand until I got to the infertility part and how you had to have evacuation done. Uh, and then, you know, the other stories, a particular lady who also had to go through that a, a number of times. And I just said to myself, wow, you managed to capture the book in the beginning and still give details in between. Now, one thing that also struck me was the nanny angle. You yeah. were able to talk about <laughs> having children. You were able to talk about postpartum depression, yet you still had time to talk about the nanny angle. 
And so I wonder Absolutely. what lessons, <laughs> besides the one you wrote in the book, what lessons did you learn again from the nanny angle, especially uh, for your sons? So um, in my case, I think I changed nanny as much as 12 times. <laughs> <laughs> and, I saw that. <laughs> um, it was just a horrendous experience, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I'm not a wicked person. The people who know me know that I'm pretty much very soft-hearted. I'm, I'm sweet. I'm disciplined. I have my limits, okay? So, um, but as much as I, I believe I'm from, but it, it, it was such a terrible experience changing, you know, one nanny after the other, especially, and that was basically for my first child. Mm. But in, by the time I had my second child, I got just one nanny and there was a whole difference. Wow. I was able to write my book. I mean, in the first two years after I had my second son, I was able to write the book and publish it out. Wow. I was able to start podcasting. I was able to build the business of my organization to international repute you know, and, rec wow. and gain recognition doing that. And um, I should be grateful to my organization because of the women-friendly practices they, they gave yeah, us. In I, saw terms of, um, I saw that. I saw that. Yes, yes. In terms of um, um, those who have had children, my organization was really um, instrumental in playing that role to help me to achieve a lot. But beyond that, my support structures were key. So yes. I had to put it there because... First of all, your support structure starts from your husband. Hmm. The truth of the matter is when we're growing up as women, um, somehow as a girl, you play with dolls. There's something at the back of your mind that lets you know that, oh, you are going to be a mother someday. Hmm. But no one is orientating the men. And hmm. so by the time women have had babies, they kind of, it, it feels like the women are more sad to take care of the children, okay? And the fathers are not particularly too involved. I mean, if you have a good man who is helping you to do that, that's spot on, but then it's not everybody who is into it. So I wanted people to know that your first support structure is it's your It's very important. And, and I that, totally agree with yeah. that because having a very <laughs> supporting partner is amazing. You know what, Ibuku? We exactly. could go on and on and on. <laughs> on There's and a on. lot to say uh, regarding this book, but I just want to tell you, well done. And you've done an amazing job. Hopefully someday Thank I will you. meet you and give you a hug because you don't yes. know how important <laughs> this book is, especially to me right now. Thank you so oh, much. Ibuku. That makes Thank a you. lot of, you know, makes a lot of difference for me. Thank you so much for Thank having you. me. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. So uh, hopefully right. you have a great day, huh? All right. And uh, from there, I'm going to join the guys in the kitchen. I hope they don't finish the food before I get there. No, oh. we're not getting started. Don't, continue. don't pop, don't pop. We can't Stay start like you. that. Hey, That's guys. So Mike survived. Yeah. Yeah, I did, I did. <laughs> I did. Okay. okay. Uh, Chef John, you've done such a great work. Um, this is beautiful. She has the both of you rubbing their hands. Is that the I'm way you're going to rub her and fold it? I didn't realize. You don't rub her and fold. So, <laughs> Chef John, tell us, what are we looking at and how did we come about this? Um, this is a black pepper mm. shito present with my mm. um, batmatis rice mm. and then as you can see chicken you is know the song that came to my mind mr easy why, why, cook shito. why do songs always <laughs> come to your I don't mind know, i do with music okay. every time so mm. well hey we can't wait to get to the tasting this chicken uh, uh -huh. um is it is it a uh, what, what temperature is it? Uh, <laughs> what temperature is it? Uh, fried Listen, out? Mary, I was gonna let you have it, okay. but Mike no, almost died. I think died. since you already said you were gonna no, let me Mike have it, almost died. Let's not we waste time at it. Uh, oh, that, that's, that's true. Mary, that's that's true. true. He almost that's died. That's true. Mary wants to this thing. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Hey, let's 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 so let you, you, you because you I'm not a nice guy like that. Can take me too. I'm not that nice. Have that. Wait, right really? You want, want me to eat chicken and then you're giving me uh, this? Taste the shit off first. It's not, it's, you won't leave the it's chicken. The food you're supposed, the, oh you see why I said we shouldn't give Mike? I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. I I thought he had, you know. Had what? Sue is talking. The first call he gets to This thing, my home training has gotten, has, is missing. Okay. Tell us what it's like. Hmm. He said it's very, very peppery, by the way. So. Hmm. I don't think Mike is feeling any pepper. Hmm. You okay? Make sure. Okay. Make sure. Water. Make sure. Mixer, Mike, mixer. leave the chicken. Mixer. That's what he wants. Anyway, <laughs> Chef John, thank you very much. Once again, you are noble. Chef Nobu John. Chef Nobu John. I want to teach you how to eat, how to eat chicken right. like, a, like I, a gentleman. I, I, I admit oh, Benny, this. forget that thing. <laughs> so I, I found out in the course of the show that he speaks French too. Uh -huh. I'm always excited when Let I get me, uh, to have uh, hey, we, 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 in the we, kitchen. We, we, we. It's not we, 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 what? Chef, uh, uh -huh. um, uh -huh. Chef John, yeah. 
mm, um, come on to the bell. Ine. <laughs> You just asked him La. what is his name. You said, name what, uh, what is the name of the call? What are they called? The chicken. Mm, say, say magnifique. <laughs> like, I don't understand. <laughs> say magnifique. Say, say chicken a la. Poulet, poulet, poulet. La poulet. Uh, no, le poulet. Le poulet. Le poulet. Le poulet. Le poulet. Le poulet. Le poulet magnifique. Le poulet magnifique. Magnifique. Super. Super. All right. You're using a quoi bon. Super. A quoi bon. Strength. Le poulet la chicine. Thank you so much for your time. Magnifique. We can't wait to be back tomorrow. Le poulet. Le poulet. Six a.m. And many thanks to homely.ng for the kitchen accessories. Thanks to you for watching. Thanks to everyone who has been on the show. Thanks to Chef John. Thanks to the crew. Thanks to Country Le Poulet Magnifique. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Au revoir. Bye.